How about a recipe for success? Because you know what happens in the COVID-19 era, more people are turning to open their own business. And it's, it's so true in order to survive these tough economic times. And these are, however, many, many, there are actually some legal steps. You can't just open the doors. And that's why we always bring in the experts. And there are procedures required in South Africa's framework before doors can officially open for business. And we want to hook you up with the right type of advice. And we're doing exactly that. So we're calling on our legal guidance, our friend, our expert in law. It's the director at legalese.co.za. Aiton Stern in the building and he's here to answer the question i want to start my own small business so now what what, mm. what? good morning my friend how you doing i'm doing great how are you guys doing <laughs> so so good man look obviously the pandemic has brought about so many different changes so many companies there's big ones existing there's new ones starting but everyone needs to i believe register with sars correct what's the reason for that mm. man? well as the african revenue service yes. <laughs> 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 I like the growl. It's, I like the growl. It has that, that, that ominous Arr. to it. It's part of their logo, actually, yes. the growl. It's ours. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is the question? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, this has started off really well. Yes, it is. Um, great. Like the old saying goes, the only thing that's certain in life is death and taxes. Uh -huh. And they, they don't say that for no reason. It's because every business needs to pay tax. And the reason we pay tax is because we all drive on the roads, we, we uh, uh, live in our city, we take advantage of the fact that the streets are cleaned um, and that we have a functioning country. So the, what pays for all of that is our taxes. It would be a lot easier to stomach if there wasn't corruption, but that's yeah. how it is. Um, <laughs> So what pays for that is taxes. Now, every business, there's a couple of different taxes you're going to pay. But for the most part, and the simple thing to remember is that where you make profit, you pay a portion of that as tax. So every business, whether you are a small sole proprietor walking, working out of your, your, uh, your basement or your bedroom, or whether you're a public listed company, when you're making profit, you've got to pay a bit of that to SARS because we live in South Africa, and that's what pays for the whole operation. Okay. That's nice and simple, nice and palatable, nice yeah. and diplomatic too. <laughs> but moving on to the fact that when you do start your own little thing, whether it be, a, uh, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people getting into cooking and baking yes. and, and doing their own little thing. Uh, you are a private company, you're small, but you have to register as a legal entity. What is sure. the significance of registering like this? Okay, great question. So. To start off, you don't have to register as a company. It's just a very good way to run a business. So every business, if you think of a business like a house, your business structure is like the land that your house sits on. Yeah. And you can choose what your business structure is going to be, and you've got different options. Um, if you are a very small business and you don't need to register as a, as a company, you don't have to. You can just open doors, you can give yourself a name, and you can trade as a sole proprietor. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, uh, Carl Westy trading as you know, Carl Westy's uh, Shoe Palace yeah. or whatever it is. That's nice. Uh, um, it's a good business idea. Thinking, thinking of it, yep. You have like um, five businesses today, by the way. I know, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm holding them. <laughs> Sars is going to love me. Yeah. So, so you can just start, start, uh, operate. But South Africa has made it really easy to, to, to start companies. And we've got this, the Companies Act, which sets rules for how a company would be run. And quite easily register a company through SIPSI. Uh, you can do it online. I think it's about 125 rand. And you can start a business. And the reason why people do that is because a, business, a company is a really good entity entity to run a business, you've got existing frameworks of laws to work within, you've, uh, it's made really simple to do, and then your company is a separation between you and, the, and your clients. So it's not you dealing with your clients or the world personally, it's your company. So if all goes wrong, you know, you're not going to lose your house or your car, your company uh, will fold. And so it's a really good structure to work within, but you only need to register a company if it's necessary, and then you can look at certain factors which make it necessary. But it's, it doesn't need, if you don't want to register a company, you just want to start trading, you can just open doors and trade. So you mentioned starting a business, obviously, and obviously SARS is one of the, yes. the must box, the must tick boxes when yes. it comes to starting up. What are some of the other regulatory bodies or whatever it is that I have to be a part of or registered with in order to know that I'm operating safely, effectively, and no one's going to come knocking on my door saying, hey, you owe me this money or you need yes. to do X, Y, and Z? Generally, when you're running a business, someone eventually comes and knocks. <laughs> Someone's always coming knocking. Uh, hey, you owe me money. It's like, dude, I never met you. It's like, <laughs> um, Cool. So this is, it's a great question, and it's the next layer to talk about, is that it really depends on what you're doing. So all businesses need to register with SARS. If you're registering a company, you do it through SIPSI. And then it depends on your industry. For me as a lawyer, we need to make sure that you know, we have 
where, uh, uh, you know, have a legal uh, law degree, and then you might have to register with the Law Society. If you're a doctor or a medical practitioner, you're going to have to register with the HPCSA. If you're in security, there's a regulatory body. Plumbing, electricians, they're regulatory bodies. So whatever industry you're in, it's really important to find out, is there a regulatory body in this industry? Am I allowed to do this? For example, if you, not anyone can just wake up one day and sell insurance. You need to be registered. Yeah. And we have these reg regulatory bodies in order to protect the consumers and protect the industry. You know, I shouldn't be allowed to open up my doors and just say I'm a doctor and then start, you know, doing surgery. That's why we have reg regulatory bodies. So whatever profession you're doing, have a look at your industry, do a Google search. Is there a regulatory body? Do you need to register? If there is, register. If not, I Carry hope, on working. I, I hope you're listening because you can't just go around the mall now taking pictures of people. <laughs> you need to have a regulatory camera picture body taking place, okay? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, that, that is very true. And I know that you are really wanting more if you're going to start a small business or have a small business. We've got a lot more facts and figures as well as legal advice from our expert, Eitan Stern. Uh, so now what returns just after this? Uh, welcome back, you beautiful souls. You're still locked in We're live right here on Express, and we're continuing our discussion with lawyer and director at legalese.co.za. It's Adrian Stern, and as he's breaking down the legal ins and outs of starting your own small business in South Africa. Yeah, it, yeah, Ooh. indeed. And also, just before the break, Ryle said something about me taking pictures. The thing is, a little earlier for our <laughs> social media question. For context. I have to just make sure this context. Uh, we said that if you are if you are an entrepreneur, please let us know about it. And if you want to start a business, and I said my business is going to be updating profile pictures and taking pictures of people and then updating it immediately for money. Um, but yeah, so he's that's not a creep from Zanzi, no, just to clear no, that one yes, up. Yes, thank you. But anyway, <laughs> let's go back to it. Let's jump straight in. Stop smiling, Eitan. Okay, stop smiling. You're going to tell us a bit you, more now. You haven't even started your business and your PR campaign <laughs> is a disaster. Done. It's done. I'm finished already. I'm actually going to file for, for bankruptcy yeah. already. Uh, but what I do want to ask you is that, I mean, we've covered legislative. Yes. Uh, we've, we've covered the sort of financial requirements, mm. etc. We've covered a whole lot, including registration requirements, but there is something else we're missing. Yes. And that is, and I think you touched on it, uh, let's just say geography, where yes. the business is going to be. And you've got zoning and municipal requirements that you have to adhere yes. to. What are those? Take us through steps to make sure that that is, you know, that box is ticked. Great. So the reason why we have municipal guidelines and requirements is because you need to plan out a city, right? You can't have a power plant next to a primary school or you can't have a nightclub in the middle of a suburban area because, you know, there's going to be noise. So yeah. with every city, you've got municipal guidelines about what you can have where. Now, this only really affects if you're starting a, a, a venue or a shop of some sort, but you definitely need to, if you're going to start a shop or a school or um, a restaurant, you're going to need to make sure that you're doing it within a, a building and within an area that you're allowed to do that. So that's quite important to check. Okay, so earlier, on, obviously in our first segment as well, we were talking about the other re re regulatory bodies, yeah. <laughs> such as big tongue twisting words, that we have to obviously register when yes. we're starting a company. Now, you've highlighted the importance of it, but when it comes to actually finding out where do I get that information from, and if I'm starting a company or a business, what are those bodies? How do I actually find out where that information is? Great question. Um, a lot of it should be available on government websites, but I think the, a, a better place to start would even just be a Google search. Okay. You know, if you, depending on what, if you're an electrician in South Africa, Google electrician in South Africa, there's a fortune of, of information on there for, uh, on, the, on the internet. And, uh, you'll find different legal practices, different government bodies, accounting firms sort of put together articles about this. So, you know, definitely if you check government websites, they'll have the information, but if that's a little inaccessible, a Google search is going to hopefully find the right answer for you. Yeah. I like that answer. You know, that's my answer to everything is Google. It's good. Yes. Yeah. It's like, hey, how do you do that? At Google. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Well, I'm not saying that. No, listen, we, we, you know, I'm not saying that that's what we, us as lawyers do. We don't just Google all of our answers. But, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, you tell them. You tell them. Anyways, but setting up and running a business, as you know, there's a mountain of paperwork. Yes. And I'm, I have interaction with so many small businesses who are very, very small. You took in the Spaza shops or um, the single mom who's created a little, a, a little baking thing for yeah. her colleagues at work and, and those sorts of things. So I'm just wondering, all that paperwork, is it all necessary, especially if you're a small, small business? Great. Great question. And this is like a myth that we need to kind of dispel. Yeah. Um, Essentially, the more complex a business is, 
the more paperwork and complexity is going to be involved, right? So yeah. if you are starting a fin financial technology company and redefining how banks work, yeah, you're going to need reserve bank licensing, you're going to need uh, uh, documentation with your, with your clients, record keeping, and that's a complex business. If you're starting a business in your house, if you're a hairdresser or someone baking for the people in the neighborhood, yeah. just get to work and start. You know, um, we, need to st we need to understand in South Africa, it's really easy to start businesses and we have an environment which is really uh, friendly to entrepreneurs. People, this is an entrepreneurial country. So if it's a small business and you're not in a regulated space, there's no reason you can't just get to work. If it starts to work and if you're making money, so what I mean by making money is you are making more than you're spending, so you're starting to turn a profit, you're gonna to need to look into uh, uh, paying tax. And if the business is working and it's growing and it's turning to a real business, not just a project, well then you can look at registering a company and growing from there. And at that point, you know, engage with a lawyer, engage with a, a business uh, a consultant and figure out how it's done. But there should be no reason why someone sh shouldn't be able to take the few bucks that's in their, in their bank with an idea that they have and just put it into motion and see if it works. You know, you don't need to be afraid by the paperwork and the requirements just to see if an idea starts. Start Start it, start it dirty, start it quickly, and see how it goes. <laughs> I love that. Start it dirty, start it quickly. Get it going. Yeah. I love that. Of course, Ethan Stern in the building, all the advice that we've needed when it comes to starting up a company, getting involved in your business, and making sure that you're actually complying when it comes to everything that you need to know. I can't thank you enough again for joining us. Our Great. head of legalese.co.za. Sure. It's a pleasure always chatting to you, man. This is fun. It was, it was indeed. indeed. <laughs> yes.